Today we're going to be looking at the difference between a couple of woolen drafts. Um, so we're going to look at a point of contact draft and a true woolen or double drafting style draft. So to start with, we've already got our roll egg um, all ready to spin. Um, we've done a video before on how to make roll eggs with hand cards. I'll link that in the description below. So let's get started. <clears throat> so up first, we're going to look at a point of contact. So we'll just get this going here. So for a point of contact draft, you can see we've got our drafting triangle here. And we're just going to pull back with this hand. You can ha you have the option of um, using your forward hand to control the twist. It makes things a little bit easier. You just draft back. So you can see from point of contact here that what's happening as the fibers enter, um, as they get drafted, as the twist enters the fibers, um, the, the thing that makes it a woolen draft is that the twist is going to enter your fiber supply as you are drafting it. Instead of with a more worsted style um, where you're going to control that twist, and draft out your fibers before letting the twist into the fibers. This, however, does not make a true woolen because as you can see, these fibers start to align as they get drafted. So when the twist enters the fibers, they are a little more parallel than they would be with a true woolen style draft. Just let the twist build up ahead and then just draft back, letting enter your fiber supply as you draft it. So now we're going to look at a true woolen spun with a um, double draft. <clears throat> so what makes a true woolen woolen um, is that the fibers in within the yarn are going to keep this kind of um, every which way arrangement. And what that's going to do is... Um, it's gonna kind of push, uh, the fibers will push a little bit against each other inside of the yarn, which will give it a lot more loft. Um, and that's what makes those beautiful, squishy, uh, bouncy, woolen style yarns. So we're gonna look at how to do that. So we'll just get things going here. <clears throat> so we've got our roll leg, um, once again, our nice kind of, um, random arrangement. So our fibers, um, if you can see this, are more or less arranged um, this way. So um, we're going to try to keep that as much as possible. So we saw with point of contact that um, as the twist enters the fiber supply at the draft point, it sort of pulls those fibers forward and aligns them just a little bit. So what happens when we use a double draft is that we're going to let the twist enter our fiber supply before we've drafted. So we're just going to get this started here. <clears throat> so you can see our fiber supply um, has this kind of um, fibers in this really random alignment. So at double drafting, we're going to let that twist enter the fiber supply. Then we're gonna come back 
and draft it out. So we're going to very intentionally make those slopes and then come back and draft them out. That's a little more drafting than we wanted. So once more, let that twist enter that fiber supply. <clears throat> and we're going to come back and just draft out those slubs. So this would be the double part of the double drafting. So what that does is it helps preserve, so you can already see um, the surface of this single is a lot fuzzier than the surface of our point of contact was. Um, so what this helps do is it helps to <clears throat> keep those fibers as um, unaligned as possible. So we're getting closer to our fiber supply again. So once more, we're gonna let that twist into our fiber supply. We'll draft back against it a little bit. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna draft that out, those nice slubby parts. So what's going to control our um, wrist or the size of our single in this is how much twist we let enter um, the yarn and then um, the amount of additional uh, drafting that we do here. So let's get back up to our fiber supply. Once more, I'm going to draft this out, make those slips, pull back in, and then drop them out of it. So you can see here when we kind of um, open up our slip a little bit. Those fibers retain that um, misalignment there. They're not quite as aligned as they would be with that point of contact draft. Um, and the twist actually helps to hold them together. Squeeze the air out there. So this changes the structure within the yarn. Um, and that's the primary difference between um, woolen and worsted yarns is the alignment of those fibers and how well that alignment is preserved. 
in the spinning. few tricks for um, spinning a really successful true woolen. I would recommend starting with um, the lowest ratio on your wheel, so your biggest whirl, um, to make sure that you have really good control over that, the amount of twist that's entering, um, so it doesn't get away from you. If, um, if you let too much twist into your yarn, you can um, become twist locked, which won't um, it's going to make it really hard to draft out these slubs after. So for example, if we add a little more twist, that doesn't draft anymore. So if we take a little more out, kind of untwist that, then we can draft it again. So um, controlling the twist is really, really important for um, a true woolen. Um, and then controlling your your fiber supply. So we're going to draft back really fast as the twist enters. Um, so it's going to pull out a few little slubs. And then we're going to go back and draft them out to make a slightly more consistent yarn. Uh, true woolen is never going to be 100% consistent um, just because of variations in the fibers and um, well it's they're they're arranged every which way so there's going to be little pockets in there where they're, they'll get caught on each other. But you can make a fairly consistent yarn. Um, it doesn't have to be uh, totally wild. 